Well, here at the Aussie Wire, we love to tackle tricky topics, and we especially love it when someone brings us a lot of data to help us understand what's really going on with a topic that might be very contentious, very controversial, that might even be one that gets people labelled. We're not afraid of controversy here, and so we're going to dive right into one of perhaps the most controversial topics in the world for the last couple of decades, and that is the issue of vaccines. Now, I want to start by telling you where I'm coming from. I've had every jab under the sun. I served a couple of years in the Army Reserve. They jab you with absolutely every single thing that they can think of and a few that you've probably never even heard of. I was completely on board that and had no question or issue with it until my younger sister, 13 years younger than me, uh, was nearly killed in a adverse reaction event. Sadly, that's often what it takes for people to start to even begin to question what they have been told. But that's not what shocked me into asking a lot of questions. What shocked me was the complete dismissal by the medical profession of any possibility that there could have been any relationship between what happened with my sister and the vaccine, the triple antigen that she had had literally earlier that same day. It wasn't researched and a different cause was found and dismissed on the basis of contravening evidence. It was dismissed out of hand. And that caused me to start asking a lot of questions. But quite honestly, I haven't found the answers to those questions yet. And I'm hoping to improve on that state of affairs in, th in today's interview with Greg Beattie. Greg, thank you so much for coming on to the Aussie Wire. Thanks, Taver. Now, Greg, we were chatting just before we came on air. You're an author. You've, you've published two books on the statistics and information around vaccines. Uh, you're an author. You're a father and a grandfather. Uh, and you're a vaccine researcher, I guess, is the best way to, to say it. You promised me that you'd come on today with a whole bunch of data, and uh, you've certainly lived up to that promise. We're going to be going through some of that right now. But... I can't be alone in the audience. There'd be a lot of people in the audience here going, look, there's a lot of controversy around this issue. I don't really know where I stand. I don't want to be labelled as an anti-vaxxer, as, uh, as I'm sure you have been many, many times. Walk us through this, because this isn't how you started on this issue either. You've, you've, you've had your own journey into this issue. Yeah, and what I found out, the, th the thing that spoke most loudly to me, I guess, was that va the relevance of vaccines in our history has been greatly exaggerated. Okay. Now, if, if we were to talk about measles, for example, mm. and have a look at the death rates from measles in Australia over the years, we see that from 1870, the 100 years following that, mm. the death rates actually declined 99.5% before a vaccine was even licensed in the country. And that's what happened in all the industrialised countries around the world. Same picture. And if a picture could paint a thousand words, I guess that's the picture. Mm. And, and and I wondered, first of all, why, why we didn't see these pictures when we were going to school uh, in the history lessons, why we can't see these pictures even on the health department's websites. I had to actually... Uh, crawl across barbed wire almost to get the data to plot these graphs. Mm. And uh, it's very interesting. If we look at uh, whooping cough, uh, we get a similar story, just that the vaccine was introduced a little earlier mm. yeah. than it was for measles. Yeah. Uh, we've got about a 96% drop before we started mass vaccination in the 1950s. And there was a, an earlier vaccine in use, but there was an 86% drop before that. And it wasn't as widely used. So can I, can, I, can I pause you here? Because the question that this begs is, if not the vaccines, then what is it that's causing this dramatic reduction in the fatality rate from these diseases? Is there some other known explanation? Well, believe it or not, what I'm telling you is is accepted in the medical community. It's just not widely known, not even in the medical community. No. Uh, it's, it's documented in the literature. And the reasons normally given for these great declines are better nutrition, first and foremost, mm. And nutrition's improved remarkably over the years. Absolutely. And access to food. I mean, people used to starve, right. even in, in, in the affluent countries. Um, but also sanitation. A lot of this right. credit goes to the engineers uh, of, of the last 150 years. Yeah, right. uh, since we entered the Industrial Revolution, we've had a lot of problems to overcome in, that, in those areas. And that's what the gradual improvement has been. And yet vaccine folklore tells us to give all the credit to vaccines, which simply isn't the case. This paints a very clear picture, and you've, there's, there's more here as well. I'll get you to talk about this one in just a second, but the, this just throws up in my mind this question of how is it that there can be such a divergence between what the graphs are, are clearly showing and, and what is publicly accepted and what is considered to be the, the expert wisdom. And I want to invite any viewers that has data that can show that any of these graphs are, are wrong. If you've got data that contradicts this, uh, get in touch because I'm, I'm a data guy and I look at something like this and I find it very compelling. If I'm missing something, you better let me know pretty soon because honestly, this is, this is very hard to, to, to argue with. Sorry, Greg, continue. 
No, that's that's fine. Diphtheria is a little bit more of a complicated graph because mm. it went by several names if, up until about 1910 when they were all lumped together as diphtheria. But if you follow the solid black line there, you'll see that we had a, a massive decline, once again, around about 98% before we started mass vaccination in the 1950s. Mm. And even before we used the, the earlier vaccine, which which had a terrible tragedy in 1928, unfortunately, up in Bundaberg, but we won't go into that. We don't have much time. Mm. Uh, so the same story. And, and even if we go back further in time and look at, at smallpox, which I don't think we have a graph here for, but we can talk no. about that another time if yeah. you like. Um, it's the same story. The only difference is that the smallpox vaccine came in much earlier, mm. but it declined in unison with all the other infectious diseases that were inclining, uh, declining Sorry, at the time. Well, I can see very clearly. I mean, you've you've supplied me with so much more information, more than more than what we have time to to go into here. So I think I think what this means is is I'm going to have to invite you on to have a slow chat with me. We can we can pour over all the data. I can ask you all the challenging questions. I'll I'll crowdsource challenging questions and ask people to to give me great questions and counterpoints and counter information because I I want to make sure that what I believe is is actually true. The data is quite compelling, but it, I, I just find myself conflicted. It's, it, it flies in the face of, of so much of it accepted wisdom, uh, despite, and this is, this is the irony, I struggle with it despite what I saw happen to my sister. Uh, and that's, that, I think, is the cognitive dissonance that an enormous number of people are now experiencing with the COVID vaccines. Uh, they're seeing what's happened to others, their loved ones or themselves, and they're, they're struggling with that, that very same cognitive dissonance. So this seems to me like a topic that we're, we're going to have to dive a lot deeper into, Greg. Um, where can people find your work and, and find your books? My website is vaccinationdilemma.com or you can contact the Australian Vaccination Network. Uh, they sell the books as well. Um, it's probably a bit more reliable than my website. It keeps breaking down for some reason. <laughs> right, well, a lot of people downloading data from there. And you can download the data that I plotted those graphs from as yeah. well. And each of those graphs, I'll bring up the first one again, each of those graphs has at the bottom all of the different sources where this data has been sourced from. So uh, we'll make sure the link to your website as well as the link to the AVN uh, website where your books are are in the description of this video so that people can follow you up there. Uh, and Greg, thank you for coming on. And look, I, I can only imagine, I've, I've experienced for, for the last 13 years being somewhat of a pariah in some circles because I'm a social media political commentator and I speak my mind on certain things. I can only imagine it would be uh, much more difficult to be uh, labelled as an anti-vaxxer and considered to be one of uh, those people. What's that experience been like and, and do you feel that attitudes are shifting now in this sort of COVID vaccine era? Yeah, it's quite amazing. Uh, we were social pariahs, um, those who chose not to vaccinate until the COVID era came came along and people saw firsthand uh, the effect it was having on themselves, mm. you know, the, the mask mandates included, you know, the lockdowns mm. and the fact that it, it just didn't make sense to the average ordinary reasonable person. Mm. And so they're starting to look, as, as, as you mentioned earlier, they're starting to look at other issues with vaccination and, and I guess the broader medical issues in, in mm. general. So we've got a lot more we can talk about. We can talk mm. about politics. Yeah, we can talk about incidence data, which people obviously bring up in the mm. in, in the comments later yeah. on, and we can talk about all sorts of stuff if we have more time in the future. Well, we definitely have more time to do a slow chat on this. So everyone have at it in the comments. What are your counterpoints? What have we got wrong? What has Greg got wrong? What's the counter data? Let's get it all together. And I'm going to have a deep dive into this issue with Greg in a future slow chat. In the meantime, Greg Beatty, thank you so much for coming on. Mm -hmm.